From a very young age, I had loved the idea of traveling the world and experiencing new cultures. In my young mind, diplomats got to do this complemented with their sophisticated attire and the general glamour of the job. My name is Stacy Singh, a student of the Bishops High School and an aspiring diplomat. When it was time for after school attachment, I was pleased to learn of my appointment to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Having been assigned to the Department of Public Diplomacy, I ventured to learn and document exactly what it takes to become a diplomat. My mom worked um, in the service. Um, she, she was posted to Brazil and I went with her. We spent 12 years in Brazil. My first year in university basically gave me an idea of really IR is about and I realized that I I love the area because you know the, the politics the and it's very broad so it, mm -hmm. it exposes you not only to what's going on on the international agenda but also in your country. 13, 14 I decided that I wanted to get into diplomacy. Um, I recall having an interaction with our then High Commissioner to Canada, that was in 1977, 1977. Ambassadors that I have interviewed expressed deeply the hard work, sleepless nights, dedication, and continuous learning experiences as they told their stories of being diplomats. I envisioned diplomacy to be a fancy career where you dress up and travel the world, but it's totally different. However, all the ambassadors that I have interviewed have an undying love for Guyana, and so do I. And just as their work benefits Guyana, I want to be able to do things that would benefit Guyana in the future. Mr. Vernon Robinson was posted to Cuba and is now the Senior Foreign Service Officer of the Department of the Americas at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Forbes July was posted to India and is now the Director of the Department of International Cooperation at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Mr. Michael Bredesen, who is now the head of the Diaspora Unit was previously appointed to Barbados and the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, Miss Malvi Talbot and Miss Sandra Chung are Foreign Service Officers attached to the Department of the Americas. These people all go to various countries as representatives of Guyana to negotiate better business deals, establish better relations between Guyana and the countries to which they're posted and execute projects that are in Guyana's best interest. This is exactly what I expected from diplomats, apart from dressing up and traveling the world, of course. On two occasions, I served uh, in London, at Guyana's uh, High Commission there. Pretty um, interesting experience, London. My time there, I served as a first secretary at, um, in the first few years and subsequently I was promoted to the post of what we call consular, um, which is the equivalent of, a, in, in, in local context, Senior Foreign Service Officer 1. My responsibilities there included uh, consular matters because, as you know, uh, one major foreign policy goal of all countries is to look after the welfare of their nationals abroad. And we do that through uh, consular activities, providing efficient uh, consular services and also engagement with our diaspora. In the mission in Cuba, work with um, improving our relations with Cuba in terms of agreements, the bilateral agreements we have with Cuba, the whole issue of scholarships, the whole issue of CARICOM Cuba relations. Because um, in addition to the bilateral relation that Guyana has with Cuba, we also have CARICOM Cuba relations. Did you know that Guyanese born Eustace Edward Ricardo Braffitt, writer, teacher, and author of the world famous to start with love, was also a Guyanese diplomat? I was even more motivated and inspired to follow my dream after this became known to me. 
E.R. Braffitt was appointed Guyana's permanent representative to the United Nations in 1966, the same year Guyana gained independence from her British colonizers. He crafted Guyana's foreign ministry and foreign policy. To be surrounded by young women making an impact on foreign policy was equally inspiring. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has uh, opened a whole new world to me. I mean, I knew of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs before joining, but all that it entails and all that happens here, I was not knowledgeable about that. So it is quite extensive. I think it's more than the, even the general public they know about what goes on here. There's a lot that happens at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you know, and a lot that the Ministry does that people perhaps are not aware of. So. I've been lucky enough to to be able to give to have been given this opportunity to work in this field, which is I know is highly dom uh, male dominated, but I think that has been changing recently. Um, I think that it's the opposite now. I have a lot of women in the ministry. From conversations with these learned professionals, I found that one cannot become a diplomat overnight. It takes a lot of hard work dedication and negotiation skills. Present-day diplomacy doesn't require having degrees in international relations or foreign languages only. You can study economics, tourism, business, medicine or anything you passionately want to pursue and still be able to hold the position of a diplomat because present-day diplomats have to be well-rounded and highly skilled. A successful diplomat is one who can use his or her experiences, skills, and knowledge from other careers to aid in their duties. As glamorous as those uh, events may seem, they're all working events. A diplomat is always working. So when you are at a cocktail reception, it's not merely to have a presence, but you're exchanging information, you're gathering information. And it's... I think interacting with people, uh, that is quite interesting. Also, the job can vary depending on what's happening at the moment, and so you have to be quite adaptable, so that's very interesting. Sometimes your duties could be beyond what uh, is initially assigned to you. I was joined by several other students, some of whom were eager to share their journey and experiences. In the protocol department, and it's been a very busy department. It's a very busy department. There's always work to do. There's never sitting down. There are always things to be done. I am assigned to the admin department, and I would say that this department is very informative, and in a, you have to be very energetic. Firstly, we deal with different contracts, quotations, quotas, requisitions for the whole of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, my time here at Ministry of Foreign Affairs was very enlightening in that I learned to greater appreciate the importance of punctuality, efficiency, as well as dexterity. It's assigned to the Department of Americas where I learned that they are responsible for Guyana's involvement in multilateral organizations and bilateral agreements between the Caribbean region and the Latin American region. I also learned about the CSME certificates, the process of attaining them, and everything necessary to get them. So, do I still want to be a diplomat? The answer is yes. I'd love to be a diplomat in the future. But now I'm more open to not only studying international relations and foreign languages, but economics or tourism and actually establishing a career in one of those areas before pursuing diplomacy. Study hard, read a lot, learn a foreign language. Those are a foreign language is would be an asset for anyone who wants to be a a foreign service officer. Um, you have to inform yourself at all times of what is happening on the global scenario. So one has to be familiar with what is going on in our world. Uh, but before that, you have to be familiar with your own country because ultimately a foreign service officer, a diplomat represents his or her country. Um, you have to be disciplined extremely disciplined um, because diplomacy is about negotiating positions. Hmm, advice worth taking. In a nutshell, this journey has, has been fulfilling. 
Wish me luck.